attempted assassination of secular blogger Rafe Badawi, hashtag free Rafe. Rife. Um, in Saudi Arabia, secular blogger Raif Badawi, who has been in prison in Saudi Arabia for eight years, was the subject of an assassination attempt. Um, according to his wife, uh, Anif, uh, my husband, Raif Badawi, was a subject of an assassination attempt inside prison by a prisoner who was arrested because of being a member of a terrorist group, she stated on Twitter. The case was referred to the public prosecution. Rafe is on open hunger strike because he doesn't feel protected in jail. Um, she also said the ass attempted assassination took place a few weeks ago, I believe. I don't know exactly when. I don't have many details because the conversations with Rafe was very short. Um, according, there's a slight update. According to a tweet posted by his wife on the 1st of September, Badawi has stopped his hunger strike. What do do we know? What would be the motivation of such an like assassination, and by which forces within the government, or uh, like Rivka? Go ahead. Well, I was going to say I think Ansaf said that it they were people that didn't like him because he was secular, and then his secularism and also his sort of political. Uh, leanings that the government of Saudi Arabia probably doesn't that doesn't like and it the political leanings being secularism separation of church and state you know mosque and state um you know free expression those sort of things um so um i think that that is what it was going on but i know that ansaf says that when she hears from him it's really short and sometimes it she'll go months without hearing from him and then she can talk to him sometimes for longer but mostly it's really short quick and i mean her kids were so little when he first went in i don't know i'm guessing that probably a lot of time is spent just if she can talk to him quick information and maybe talk to the kids but um and there's 15 other people in his cell so I know that she's brought up before that she's been concerned about his safety because he's in the cell. And she said they're terrorists. So, mm -hmm. okay. So this is by other people there, like not just because the government, okay. It's, I don't think it's in the go government's interest at all to, for him to die. Like the government right now is desperately trying to get, you know, human right, like trying to make Saudi Arabia look like friendly to, I don't know. Like I think that I mean they are doing some hidden covert assassinations and um, stuff like that. But this killing him for them would be like not right now, not a good time. Like the attention that that would bring would be horrible for them, given the situation that they're dealing with. Rivka? Right. I'm not sure that it's the Saudis necessarily, mm -hmm. but whomever yeah. is in that cell, because remember he's in a, a prison cell with like 15. Or 13 that's, other people. It's that's not insane. like in the United States yeah. where they have like, you know, yourself or maybe two people in the cell. They're all jammed in there. And Ansaf said that the other people in there, a lot of them are terrorists or, you know, other, you know, jihadi type, you know, types. But I know that Canada, which is where the family has gotten asylum, is really has been doing a lot of. Uh, lobbying on behalf of him, and in Quebec, there's a mm. whole thing that's always going on in support of free rights. There's a lot of Quebec work. is Quebec. Is, Quebec is great when it comes to secularism mm -hmm. uh, and fighting for secularists. Um, but but so so the other prisoners could actually because they are the other prisoners that are against blasphemy or don't hide don't like people that hold anti-religious views. They are they could be a danger to him, right? Um, and actually, if the government wanted to get rid of him at some point, maybe they could just try to encourage it uh, by mixing him with prisoners that would carry it out and then just say, like, oopsie, like it wasn't us, it was an oopsie, you know what I mean? Like, maybe that would be a way for the government, yeah. Well, I think that was part of why he was going yeah. on a hunger strike, too, was to right. appeal to them saying, like, look, I'm not safe here. These people right. are coming for me, you know? Right. Can we can we actually read this? Can you respond to this comment by Ronald and the Ronald is saying could happen in any prison, right? Even in Holland, they have people convicted for terrorism in prison. Why specific oh. 
likely he doesn't feel safe are the guards lagging or dot dot dot. Okay, Susanna, you said the T word. We don't say the T word oh. here. We say doing. We say T people or doing the T. Okay, those are <laughs> doing the T. Doing the T. Okay, so guys, share this video because we just got like a deprioritization for saying the T word. Okay, um, but okay. I mean, how do you respond to that? Um, I mean, technically, it could happen anywhere. And wait. Um. You, why specifically does he feel safe? Are the guards liking? Or we we don't actually have a lot of information about why specifically he doesn't feel safe. She says that the last time that she was able to talk to him was only five minutes. Um, so she only got the briefest glimpse into what happened. This happened supposedly weeks ago, and over the summer, she has been raising awareness about the fact that she has not heard from him for weeks and months and months on end. So this is one of the few times she's been able to hear from him after complete radio silence and not knowing if he's even alive. Um, and um, he finished his hunger strike after the, a member of the Saudi Human Rights Commission visited him in prison and inquired about his complaints and needs. So it seems like it's being handled in one way or another. Yeah, but again, the situation is not comparable to other countries. It's not comparable to other countries at all. No. Um, oh, by the way, we do not have a lot of information about the motivations of the person of this alleged attempted assassination. Because oh, again, two... hmm. go on. Uh, I think it's ten years. No, let's ten... let's finish the question because people don't, will not. So, Ethan is saying, how long is he sentenced to stay in prison? Oh, okay, sorry. go on, Rivka. Yeah. It's ten years and a thousand lashes. 1,000 lashes. And how many of the 1,000 lashes he's gotten already? Do you I know? I think, I can't remember, but they do it in chunks because yeah. he can't he can't take it. Yeah, physically. he would die if you take 1,000 lashes. Yeah, I mean, I die. think he's like in his 100 or something, but I'm not sure. So he's gotten, after how many years he got 100? Like, they, 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 want, they want to finish the 1,000, but every time they do like another 50, it gets I so think, much yeah, internet. Like 40, I think they do, a group of 40. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So he's supposed to get a thousand lashes, but they do it like forty or fifty at a time. But there has been so much like they haven't got above a hundred because every the second time they did it, it got so much international attention, and they don't want his case to get international attention. So he's so like he, only yeah. Go on. I was gonna bring up real quick too. Um, Ansaf Hader got a award from Freedom from Religion Foundation. Uh, I think it was two thousand and eighteen. Uh, speaking of freedom from religion foundation and Rav Badawi for the work that she has been doing in the secularism, uh, activism that she's been doing. So it's just kind of interesting that this article about Rife and Ansaf followed the freedom from religion foundation article. Before we go to Susanna, I'm going to use my male privilege to speak ahead of her and say, Ronald is saying, what did he do? And, uh, Paka Jung answered right away, answered like, blogging. That's his crime. He blogged. This is for, for about secularism. He and did what all three of us do here any day of the week. He did what Ellie yeah. did yeah. yes. any day of the week. Yeah, and but he's he wasn't been sentenced to a, um, a massive fine that equates to many millions of dollars in Canadian currency, a thousand lashes, 10 years in prison. To answer your question about the lashes, he received 50 lashes in 2015 um, publicly. Oh. And that's um, the first of the 1,000 that was supposed to be administered over 20 weeks. Um, however, that incident brought huge international attention and they shut it down. Well. He's still sentenced to receive those lashes, but they stopped doing it. Um, the thing is, though, is that over the past couple of months, Saudi Arabia has um, abolished flogging. They have abolished flogging as a form of um, punishment and sentencing. However, that what they ruled with that, it's not entirely clear if past sentences of lashings will be expunged. Okay, so, so they that, don't know uh, if it's retroactive. Exactly. 
with what you're saying. Okay, okay t- Susanna, she didn't. He didn't do what we do. If he did what we, if he said the things that we had said, he would okay. be executed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's so true. he said he's getting ten years of prison and a thousand lashes for saying way, 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 way milder stuff. So what his the biggest one that they keep referring to uh, is like so he he was secularism like he didn't he he never said that he's an atheist or anything like that, um, but. He also said that if he ever meets Muhammad, this is the worst thing that he said in the eyes of the Saudi uh, government, that if he ever sees Muhammad, he would not, um, he wouldn't see him as his superior. He would shake his hand as his equal. And that was the worst, like the blasphemous thing you could say to treat Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad as his equal. Uh, wait, Michael is Michael sure saying he didn't just blog, he founded a liberal organization. Okay, so mm-hmm. thank you for that, Michael, for clarifying. I also actually but think... Like, but, but hold on, let me just clarify. Like, just blogging, like, the, the, you know, I'm not going to dismiss how let's like, like, act like blogging is not a big deal. Secular bloggers, for example, in Bangladesh and in other places, blogging is like a form of expression uh, it's basically writing, and it's actually very dangerous work, uh, you know, in s- these countries. Okay, I know he didn't just blog, right? But you know, j- just blogging is, you know, is blogging when you do th- this kind of work, this kind of activism is a big deal. But go on, sorry. Um, and I would actually like to correct what I said. Hmm. Um, what I do is in no way comparable to what he does because the threats to my life, my safety, are minuscule not even i wouldn't even i can't compare myself to Raif badawi um i'm not brave he's brave that's a brave person um yeah so i i would like to correct that i don't think what i do is comparable to him in any way yeah don't worry we're not gonna yeah it doesn't mean yeah. so by the way, we got a we got a comment here. Armin Navabi is a, is a biggest a biggest stupid dot 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 dot. Hindus mock on Armin's mother, uh, laughing tear tear of joy emoji, tear of joy emoji, tear of joy emoji, tear of joy emoji. Okay, great great comment. Uh, Chris is saying I I piss on God's fe- uh, feet, hoping that's not his hoping that's not his kink. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, Ronald saying, got it, ridiculous country, normally quite skeptical about um, conspiracies, but this uh, definitely stinks. The, um, they basically let the fundamentalists do their dirty work if it's true. Yeah, actually, we don't know this is, if this is That's true. That's speculation. Like, just, we can't say that. that. Yeah, we're spec like we are. We're not. I'm hoping we didn't come off as actually saying this is this is the case. We are no. just to be clear. This is this is a speculation, right? Um, all right. News. Thank you for joining us. Subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell thingy. If you haven't, I don't know why. What has what's holding you back? Okay. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, why haven't you subscribed to our channel? Explain that to us, please. Like bell <laughs> and also. If you if you're not getting notifications and stuff because YouTube is not telling people that we have shows because YouTube is like oh this person told us that they want to get your shows right they want to get your videos but nah you we think is no and oh look oh they also hit the bell button but nah you guys are too controversial we want to show them mainstream stuff we want to show them CNN or cat videos or whatever. But even there are people are like, no, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, we don't think you want this. They're like, no, please show it to us. We say to you, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, we think we know what's better for you than you yourself. So to solve that, link, there's a link in the description, uh, which is to our newsletter. So hopefully some of our, we could email it to you. So hopefully you get some of our content that way. Okay. So yeah. Subscribe to our newsletter as well and share share our videos because you know, we do get demonetized That's an obvious on every one of our videos. So F that but we don't care about that anymore <laughs> But we also get deprioritized and that's even more damaging to us Deprioritize what does that mean? That means we're not we don't show up on the suggested You know videos on the right and all that, you know on the on people's home pages and that's how channels grow Unfortunately, we can't grow, so we need you guys to share our videos. 